Hello, I'm State Representative Barbara Sears from the 46th House District. Welcome to Ohio in Focus. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ohio in Focus, a program that brings state government to you. I'm your host, Charles Willoughby. We have with us today State Representative Barbara Sears, who serves the 46th House District, which includes the western portion of Lucas County. Thank you for joining us, Representative. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Um, why don't you, we start off with a brief background. I know you've had, uh, this is your second term in the House, mm -hmm. but if you could just give us a little background info on uh, how you got here. Okay, sure. Um, I served on Sylvania City Council up in Northwest Ohio. Mm -hmm for 10 years, last four serving as the president of council. I uh, had the opportunity to look at an appointment down here and uh, decided that it would be a, a nice opportunity to do that. Uh, that's great. We're glad to have you here. Um, as I said, you know, it's, it's uh, the second term as a state representative um, and now assistant majority floor leader as well. Um, could you give us a little bit of, a, of an idea? Is that more than you expected to be, the responsibilities there, or are you enjoying um, the new position that you're in today? You know, I'm absolutely enjoying it. It's, it's always fun to be in a position where, where you, you have the opportunity to drive some of the agenda a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting to, to take on new tasks and new responsibilities and, and just get more into the process. I'm really enjoying it. Sure. Well, I, I, as we all know, there's 99 house districts, mm -hmm. uh, each, one, each one being unique in one way or another. What would you say would be the 46 house districts' unique point or some of the issues that they're facing in particular? You know, the 46th House District actually is an amazing blend of, of um, a bit of urban, a bit of rural, fair amount of agriculture. Uh, we have a, a nice variety of small cities, villages, townships uh, that all put together uh, the district itself. It's somewhat of a bedroom community to both Toledo area, but also to Ann Arbor and Detroit. And so we get a little blend of that across the Michigan line type flavor too to the district, which always makes it it's interesting and a little complicated at times. Sure, butting right up against our neighbors to the north. Exactly. Um, if you could for a little, just describe some of the legislative initiatives that you've worked on um, or that you've gotten especially involved in this General Assembly. Well, this General Assembly and even last General Assembly when we were in the minority, um, a lot of us got together and sort of did work study groups uh, over the summer, particularly uh, prior to this year start or this General Assembly starting. My main focus during that period of time was Medicaid. You know, with Medicaid budget roughly 40 percent of, of our budget, uh, the state budget, uh, you know, we needed to, to sit back and do a lot of research and planning on what we can do to bring some reforms into the Medicaid budget, how we can bring the cost in line. With, with federal health care reform coming, coming at us very quickly, uh, you know, we could easily set up a scenario where, where Medicaid alone could, could really take two-thirds of our budget if we didn't start to bring it in line quickly. So, you know, two years ago, we really started the project of how are we going to what I call plot and plan to get mm -hmm. us to where we are actually today. So a lot of my, uh, a lot of my work and quite frankly, a lot of the, the legislative initiatives that I put forth over, um, over the last couple of years have somewhat been absorbed into the budget, which was actually kind of nice to see. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I may never get that, that past marker behind them, but, but the, uh, the reform, the intent, and the policy is is in there, which is very nice. Right. At the end of the day, that's a, that's what the idea that's, is. That's why we're here. Right. To make <laughs> an act laws that will right. uh, have a good have impact. Um, another piece of legislation you worked on was House Bill 14, mm -hmm. which deals a bit with uh, vicious dogs. Could you give us a little bit more background on that? Sure. When um, in the last General Assembly, when I started what was then House Bill 79, mm -hmm. uh, it was a simple legislation that solely moved the word pit bulls out of the definition of a vicious dog so that the law would recognize um, really all dogs based on their behavior. This year we, we um, really ratcheted up what, what House Bill 14 does in that we added all the due process language that we really needed to add. So instead of just saying that, that a pit bull is the only vicious dog that you have in Ohio, whether that pit bull is a six week old puppy or a full mature dog, uh, we said we're going to look at all dogs. And, and the behaviors of these dogs. And we're going to either say they are um, a dog in good standing, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, or a menacing or nuisance dog or dangerous dog and a vicious dog. And then we're going to take that, 
definition or that classification and we're going to put certain restrictions on it, leaving some flexibility for the judges to say, you know, I know this is a nuisance dog, but really what I think we need to do is have the owner and the dog go to obedience training school. Um, or clear up to, no, this is a very vicious dog, and unfortunately there's no ability to save this dog. Mm -hmm. Between those two extremes um, is everything else. And, uh, and it's very, very comprehensive. Um, I'm thrilled that the county commissioners came on board with it. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled that the wardens came on board with it. And, uh, and it passed overwhelmingly, and I'm very happy about that. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I, that sounds like a good piece of legislation for uh, all animal owners out there and making sure that everyone's safe within their home and in the neighborhood. And, and that was the idea. You know, even a piece of it even, um, even helps some of our urban core areas, which were very sensitive to this issue. And uh, in, that it, in that it treats felons differently on their ability to own dogs. Mm -hmm. and, and by doing that, uh, we give our law enforcement some opportunity to, to, to check and make sure that they're not owning dangerous or vicious dogs or that the dogs are spaded or neutered, um, which helps law enforcement also. Well, we, again, it's appreciative. I'm glad the wardens are behind it. They're uh, yeah. on the ground at that, at that aspect. Um, you had mentioned to me earlier, uh, Bill, about uh, behind the wheel driving mm -hmm. um, and, the, and some changes that may or may not need to be made, but uh, some legislation you've uh, in, initiated? You know, I did. I initiated a piece of legislation that deals with uh, safety while you're driving, particularly as it relates to trucks. Uh, you know, we, we provide our children with some, some driver's education. But, but we all know, we've all been there, it's never enough. Um, you know, you could educate them for years on end and hopefully they will continue to get educated. But what this piece of legislation does is actually try to put some formal um, educational process in on how to deal with trucks on the road, truck safety basically. Mm -hmm. I see this piece of legislation probably growing and expanding to really do maybe an overall and comprehensive look at what are we teaching our young drivers uh, once they have the opportunity to get behind the wheel. What, are, what responsibilities are we going to put on the children? What responsibilities are we going to put on their parents? And, and what's government's role in that sure. to try to protect and keep folks safe? Now, is, was that uh, an initiative from the district or, or an incident that happened or was that brought to you um, since uh, you've been a representative? Uh, you know, really two things. Number one, it was something that, that when my children were learning how to drive, I had to self-teach them sure. because it wasn't something that they, that they learned. Even just simple things, how far behind a truck do you need to stay so they can see you? Mm -hmm. You know, th that they need wider space to turn, that, um, that they can't stop as quickly as a car can. And, uh, you know, so I had to kind of help my kids learn some of those things. Mm -hmm. Uh, not without close calls, blessedly no incidences, <laughs> but not without close calls. And, um, you know, and then it kind of came to me as another issue through, through a friend of theirs. Yeah. And just seemed like the right thing to do. I, th I think, you know, if, if nothing throughout this budget, um, y you can, well, if, if you can say anything about this budget, I guess I should say, and that is that we're taking every piece of it and looking and seeing how we need to reform it and update it. You know, strong leadership should never be afraid of looking back at their own work product and saying that we need to bring it up to speed, we need to bring it up to current. Sure. And, and that's what we're doing and that's what this does. Well, it, it is a detailed uh, process and sometimes laborious, but if you could, uh, and so you're also um, on serving on committees mm -hmm. um, and district community district work, but could you give us a typical day here at the State House? Sure. Sure. Um, first, there is no typical day. <laughs> a typical day is, is not typical. Sure. Um, you know what, you, you get down here from the district and it really is full steam ahead the entire time you're here. Mm -hmm. You know, my goal is always to, to uh, you know, get back to the district as quickly as I can. My district's two and a half hours away from Columbus, so I tend to be down here a little longer than folks that only have a half hour, 45 hour, hour drive. Mm -hmm. um, but generally speaking, first thing in the morning, I try to read and get caught up on what's going on, read the, the papers, try to get caught up on, on everything that's happening in the day, uh, sit down with my legislative aide and make sure that we've got all that day's meeting sort of organized and planned so that I'm prepared for who's coming in. So if they're coming in on an issue, I have time to read about the issue before they're coming in to make use of the time that we have together. Uh, you know, it, it's looking at legislation, it's preparing for committee meetings. I may have you know, two or three committee meetings on a, on a Wednesday, um, may have seven or eight different meetings. And then in the evening time particularly, you have all your associations that come into town for their state legislative days. Uh, diabetes, heart, uh, you know, your doctors, your nurses, all the, different, all the different core groups 
that will have their legislative day and they generally have some kind of a reception in the evening so you can interact with members sure. which is a great opportunity to to really sit down and and spend some time with folks from your district that come down to Columbus and and do that drive so you want to make sure that you take time to to interact with them and make sure you understand what their issues are. I know that there's been a lot of uh, experts and, and um, associations involved with the budget process as well, um, but in addition to being the assistant majority floor leader, um, what other committees do you serve on or, or appointments have you been given? Um, I serve on the finance committee, finance mm -hmm. and appropriation, and within that committee I serve <coughs> on the human services subcommittee. Um, think all things Medicaid, mm -hmm. sort of my life. <laughs> um, then in addition to that I serve on health and aging, and then I sh serve also on insurance. So everything I serve on is sort of all wrapped up in that insurance and Medicaid and health insurance area right now. In addition to that, um, I serve on a couple uh, Medicaid uh, committees that are not formal committees, but they're more um, specific issue-oriented committees. So again, bringing your experience uh, mm -hmm. to the table, and we, uh, that's always helpful when you have someone that has, been, um, that has gone through some of these ideas before and, right. and gone through the details of them in committee process. Well, and, and my experience as owning a health insurance agency and, and being in that really since 1984 mm -hmm. uh, gives me the opportunity to, to kind of jump into some of these meatier issues without having to worry about just the top level definitional. I'm way past that. Sure. So I can actually get into some of the policy and, and look at how it's structured and, and balance you know, what we're doing in our state versus other state and trends. So if you had to pick one thing or maybe a few things that you would say are most enjoyable about your job uh, here as a state representative, what would that be? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat of, of a policy wonk type of person. Okay. So, you know, where, where some people, um, you know, go home and, and read stuff, I actually like to sit down and, and read legislation. Um, you know, so that's probably one of the, it sounds odd, but that's one of the most enjoyable things about it is just, it's like every day you never know what issue is going to come up, mm -hmm. whether it be Great Lakes water, whether it be Pitbull, whether it be driver's education, whether it be Medicaid, uh, you know, the, the, the vast realm of, of topics that we have the opportunity to deal with um, is, is pretty amazing. Well, there are, there are certainly a lot of uh, issues facing your district and all other districts, and uh, you must have had enough, to, enough work to enjoy with the budget process, um, seeing as that is one of your uh, favorite things to do, read legislation. Um, however, when have you, has there any been any legislation you've worked on or a constituent group from your district that um, you've interacted with um, that has brought ideas to you or solutions for things that they've seen on, on, on the ground, I guess, or back in the district? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, the district and, and making sure that the district that you serve has a voice down here is, is critically important. It's, it's why we're here. Um, you know, so even even if I look at the House Bill 14, the pit bull legislation, um, my local community had huge support in that okay. and actually advocated very strongly. Um, every piece of legislation that, that I've worked on, uh, you know, I always try to touch base with, with the folks that I serve mm -hmm. and, and make sure that, they, that I get their opinions. Whether I agree with them or not agree with them, you know, it's equally important to be educated when you're in favor of something as it is to be educated when you're not not supportive of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you've got to have that check and that balance to make sure that you're doing the right thing. Right. And making uh, informed decisions at all steps of the way. You have to. And the only way you can make an informed decision is to understand both sides of an issue. Um, how would it be best for your constituents to reach you? Or what's the best way for them to contact your office? I try very hard to, to reach, you know, to reach the folks that I serve however they choose to, to bring a, an issue. Um, I generally, if you email, I email back. If you write, I write back. Mm -hmm. Um, there are folks that actually still handwrite letters. Are there? <laughs> Not many, but there are, and so that's very much appreciative. Sure. Uh, you know, phone calls, I try to always return with a phone call. Okay. Um, you know, this summer when we're back in the district more consistently, I will, I will again do open houses or office hours, which I call them I, out at the library, just anybody who wants to come in. No agenda, whatever's on your mind is, is good to talk about. Great. Um, so I try to just be out and about. I like a busy schedule, so I tend to be out in the district as much as I possibly can be. I know you've been uh, kept very busy on finance committee and, and in your leadership role and with a budget, and we've actually had a very busy General Assembly yes. um, all together. But we appreciate you taking a few uh, minutes out of your day today to come meet with us and uh, to talk to us. And it's been a pleasure talking with you, Representative. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank Thanks. You. We look forward to seeing you again on the next edition of Ohio in Focus, the program that brings state government to you. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>